Hi, I'm Rich Trithui. Every house needs a clean, consistent supply of fresh water. And millions of houses in America get their water from a privately owned well, like this one. Now this homeowner contacted us. Everything was going fine, and then one day, her water system changed. Let's take a look. Richard, thank you for coming down. I'm glad to be here. So why am I here? We're having a problem with the shower water. It, the pressure is fluctuating. It's, it's up and it's down, and it's just driving me crazy. We came down into the basement, and I heard this clicking sound over this From way. down here? Yeah, down in this area. Well, let me just explain how a basic well system works. First of all, you need to have a pump. Sometimes the pump is inside right here, but in your case, the pump is submersible. It's down at the bottom of the well where the water is. Mm -hmm. You also have a pressure switch right here. This is what brings the pump on. It's trying to bring the pump on to give you about 50 pounds of pressure up at the faucets. Now, if that's the only two components we had, the pressure switch and the pump, every time you open up that faucet, the pump will be on and off, on and off. It'll burn out in no time, and they're expensive. Now, any well system needs to have a tank, and that tank has an air charge at the top and water at the bottom. Now, that provides a reservoir of water ready to go under pressure so you can open up the faucet and not bring the pump on. Anytime I hear about your symptom, the clicking and the fluctuation, it suggests that the tank has failed on the inside. The tank has failed? Yep. It's only a few years old. Well, that can happen. Oh, wow. But fortunately, we are right around the corner from the people who invented the well tank. Let me run and get one, and we'll be right back. Thank you, Richard. Well, Tim, this is quite a place you got here. Well, thank you very much. Welcome, Richard. This is our education center here at Amtral. What we do is we bring in engineers, contractors, and building owners. We buy all kinds of well tanks, cut them open, talk about how they're made and how they're used. Almost looks like a laboratory. It is almost like a lab. Could you educate me? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Most well tanks are made out of steel. All right, but no water actually touches the steel, right? That's correct. So what we do is we start off with a polypropylene liner. That way it's not going to give us any kind of funny odors or tastes. Okay. That drops right in there with a nice form fit, you'll see. Look at that, like a glove. Yeah. You guys are good. So the water comes from the well pump right into the bottom here, into this lower chamber, but you still need a diaphragm above it. That's correct, and that's Amtral's pride and joy. Amtral actually invented the diaphragm tank in 1954. We use a butyl diaphragm twice as thick as anyone else. Okay. So other people don't use butyl? No, some people can use a blend of rubber, okay. and it can make your water actually taste like you're drinking a glass of tires. I wouldn't want that. No. All right, so that goes this way? Yep, that just drops right in. All right. But now the important seam is really between these two materials, right? The polypropylene and this butyl. That's right. How do you guys do that? Well, what we do is we have a very high power machine. It's called the hoop groover. And it actually makes this groove right in here, locking the diaphragm in place with a nice positive seal. Hoop groover. That's right. Say that three times fast. <laughs> All right, so I can see it made an imprint right here. It really makes a nice tight seal right there. That's right. All right, how do other people do it? Well, here's a couple of other ways. OK. So I can see there's like a metal sleeve right here that actually could score that diaphragm a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, what else you got? Here's another one. All right, so they take a piece of metal right there and actually pinch it. Yep. All right. And what happens when that goes into the tank? So there's no actual physical connection with the tank, so it can rattle around. That's right. I think I'll take your method. <laughs> All right. So now that's the important seal, though, right? Because yeah. if that goes, the whole well tank is gone. Yeah, and then your pump's not far behind there. All right. So we have polypropylene. We got the diaphragm above it. Let's talk about tank construction. OK. What happens next is we build the air side of the tank. Now, here at Amtral, what we do is we take a sheet of steel, put in a very high power press, and draw a dome over that. All right, so this is all one piece of steel that you've formed into this perfect spherical shape, and there's no visible welding seams at all. That's correct. No seams here at all. And what that does is that actually makes the steel twice as strong as regular really? steel. Not only that, but we actually, that actually acts like a truss, actually making it even stronger. So there's no chance of that oil canning happening inside the tank? Not with this one. Okay. All right, how else would other people do it? Well, here's another way of doing that. What this manufacturer does is they take a sheet of steel and roll it. I see the steel right here. Here's the sheet. Bring it right around to here. Now, welding seems all at the top and the bottom. Pretty gnarly looking welding, too. Yeah, we know better than that. All right. So now, once we got the tank constructed, what else we got to do? We got to finish it off. Because this is going to be in a basement filled with water in a humid environment, yeah. we got to put a nice coat of paint on it. So what we do here is we cover it in a primer and then put a finish coat on it. Does everybody do that? Not everybody. Some people can actually try to get that all in one shot. I think you got to realize, too, that this is a steel tank, that if there's a failure in the paint, that humidity could actually rust the tank from the outside in. That's right. All right, so we have it painted. What else you got to do? Well, you got to get air into it. Sure. Okay. What we do here, we've invested a lot of money in projection welding our air stems. Look at how beautiful that weld is. It really is a work of art. Yeah. Beautiful. And what about that? There's another way of doing that. That's a competitor? That is. Looks the same on the outside. And an O-ring? 
I think I'd take your method on that one. <laughs> All right, so what else are we gonna do? Well, we gotta get water in there. Oh, that's right, it's a well tent. <laughs> All right. So what we do here is we have a stainless steel connector. All right, do other people use stainless? Not everybody. Some people use plastic. Take a look at that tank over there. All right, what's this tank made out of? Fiberglass. Okay, so fiberglass tank, it looks like a plastic base and plastic piping down here. You know what, I bet you this is cheaper. It is. Okay, so what's wrong with plastic? Well, you got all the water for your house coming in through that plastic pipe. If that were to crack or someone were to step on it. You might need another pump just to pump the water out, right? <laughs> yeah. A lot more security with the better tank. That's right. All right, now I'm told you make all this stuff right here. Right here in Rhode Island. Can you give me a tour? Absolutely, let's all go right. take a walk. Tim, I have driven by this plant for years. I'm glad to finally get inside. Well, glad to have you. But before we go in, I ask you to put these safety glasses All on right. first. All right. So our tanks start out right over here. You can see them. We start with a carbon steel disc, and we form that shape. Into that upper top part of the tank. That's right. The All way right. we do that is with a 500 ton press. Boy, that'll bend some metal, won't it? That will. Look at the size of this thing. Two stories up and one story down. All right, so where'd the tank go? Let me show you, right over here. There it is. Twice as strong as what it was before. All right, so that's the top of the tank. What's next? We need the liner. So as you know, Richard, the critical components to the well tank are on the inside. The parts you don't see. That's right. For us, our polypropylene liner. Oh yeah, I saw that in the laboratory. Starts off as resin. All right, so these beads of polypropylene, I imagine they get heated up. Superheated and vacuum formed into that form-fitting liner. The one that fits like a glove? And in Amtra, we make our own diaphragms. Okay. That way we can guarantee the quality of each one. Very good. They start off as raw butyl rubber. Oh, this is the raw material. It almost feels like taffy. Yep. It gets injected into the press, and under temperature and pressure, it manufactures the diaphragm. So Richard, here's where it all comes together. We got our steel, we got our liner, we got our rubber diaphragm, and here's where we're gonna make that hoop groove. Okay. The roll bar picks it up, takes it right over, it clamps it in place. There it is, I can see that groove now. The hoop groover. All right, what's next? Welding's next. All right. This is our welding cell. The robot picks up each tank, loads it into the welder to be precision welded. Got it. Oh, there's the welder. All right, so once it's welded, what happens? Well, after that, not a single tank leaves here without first being tested. Good. Right over here is our test rig. Tanks are loaded into this chamber. They're charged at high pressure with helium to make sure that there's no leaks at all. And then it's ready to time to paint? And it's ready for that. Well, finishing is really important to us here at Amtral. We first degrease the tanks and then chemically etch them. So what does the etching do? It gets them ready for paint. We put a beige primer on first, and then after that's dry, we come over here for our blue top coat. You know, Tim, you're not the only well tank that's blue anymore. But just because it's blue doesn't make it a well extra. Well, Tim, thank you so much for the tour. It was great. Well, you're welcome, and your tank's already on its way down to that job you're site. You're good. Thank you very much. Before I leave, your safety glasses. Great. Anytime. See ya. Helping with our installation today is local well professional John Lemmy. John, thanks so much for your help. No problem. Hey, I got a chance to tour the Amtro facility. Pretty impressive. Amtro builds a great tank. My family's been in this business for three generations. It's the only tank we've ever used. I will take that as high praise. We all set to go? We are now. Thanks, John. I'm going to go check in with the homeowner. Well, Karen, John is all set. The water's back on. Ready to do the honors? Sure. 
Now look at that, steady pressure, no fluctuation, just as it should be. That's great. Hopefully this tank's gonna last. You know what, I saw the way these tanks are made. I don't think you have to worry about that. Well, that'd be great. Would you like a glass of water? I'd love one. 